So I'm going to speak about the development and application of a formula to increase safety and predictability of the ICL lens vault uh, using the Insight 100 very high frequency digital ultrasound system. And I have a financial interest in this topic, uh, financial interest in ArcScan. So it goes without saying that when you look at a population of ICL's uh, patients uh, up to minus 20 with up to more than six doctors a cylinder, you get these absolutely incredible results uh, with people seeing better uh, after the ICL surgery without glasses than they did before with the glasses, often because we're treating such high levels of myopia and we get extraordinarily good safety. Um, we, uh, the accuracy of the procedure is stupendous. It's because it's just, you know, uh, acrylic. So yeah, it's, it, it, it is what you get when you refract. Uh, and so that's extraordinary. Uh, but the risks of surgery are mostly related to the sizing of the lens. And, you know, the evolution of how sizing has changed over the years is what this topic is about. White to white was the mainstay. It still is for, you know, the vast majority of surgeons that are sizing ICLs using the Alcos website from STAR. Um, Doherty started um, a whole movement together with Carlo Lovisolo, who actually initiated the idea of um, sulcus to sulcus measurements. And Kojima uh, added the sulcus to sulcus lens rise onto this as well. So we were using the uh, high frequency ultrasound system uh, using Kojima formula for the most part. And we did a whole set of eyes in order to then use it as a training set to develop a new algorithm. And we put everything in and out of this came in the regression analysis that the ciliary body inner diameter, something that had never been described before, but I kind of coined it on that name which I thought was gonna be pointless, but it turned out to be the most significant predictor of lens fold. And so much so that it actually threw out the lens, the sulcus to sulcus um, measurement. It actually wasn't part of the equation anymore, completely eliminated. We also found that the scotovic pupil size was significant. So, you know, whereas most formulas were giving us a recommended lens size, our formula using three parameters that had never been described before for lens sizing um, is developed so that we give the predicted value for each lens size so that the clinician can decide uh, what bolt he wants. So as I said, we had a training set of 42 eyes. We developed the first regression formula, did another 36 using that. And then we bundled everything together to do a formula of 2.0 uh, with the next 69 eyes tested through that. And I will show you the results. So here's, here's our training set using the Kojima data. Here's the mean and the interquartile range. And with our first formula, the interquartile range went down from 390 to uh, 170, and then formula two down to 131. Just combining all of those together for comparison to what all of the ranges that would be produced by all of the other formulas, you can see that this posterior chamber dimension based um, formula is, you know, providing us with much, much more accuracy in terms of predicting uh, the actual volt within the eye, such that, in fact, nothing compares to it. If we look at statistically um, comparing this London Vision Clinic formula to all the other formulas, we see that actually the STAR formula in 17% of cases recommended a lens size too higher than that recommended by very high frequency ultrasound. And, you know, when you've got two lenses outliers, that often means a potential exchange. So here's an example of that where our formula suggested a 12.6, giving it about a 560 or so uh, a volt. In fact, clinically, we got 800, 800 approximately in both eyes. So here's an example where if we had used the star 13.7, the chances are we would have flipped over 1200 and would have had to do a lens exchange. Here's the regression line of our formula one and formula two. And you can see that, you know, the scatter of these results is stupendous, meaning that we have 61% of eyes within a hundred microns of intended and 96% within 300 microns of the intended. So nothing really but rivaling this uh, uh, to date. And we've placed this equation on iclsizing.com, it's freely based calculator on like the ASCRS concept where you all of the formulas are in here. So you can put your data in and get all of the formulas and compare and contrast them. So thank you very much.